In the time it takes to watch this program, somewhere in this country, one young person and two adults will die in alcohol-related traffic accidents. The following story is based on true incidents. Kowski? Goldblatt? Blake? Matthews? Matthews! Yo! How's the knee? Still there, huh? Mick! What? Peterson! Peterson! Get your rear in gear, Peterson! <laughs> matter forget your playbook again yes sir mr. a Show up! The new transfer. What's your excuse for being late, Shaw? Couldn't find a ring? My butler forgot to wake me up. <laughs> That's very funny. Very good. You better fire your butler, huh? All right, everybody, gather around. People, practice starts at 6 a.m. sharp. Oh. There are hockey players, then there are those who play hockey. I want hockey players. And if you don't want to work, then leave the rink now. You also know the rules when you're away from here. No drinking during the season. 11.30 curfew on the weekends. Captains Peterson, Matthews, up front. Come on, let's go! Let's go! Go, 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 go! go. Do you need breakfast? Coach doesn't feel he's had a good first day's practice unless everyone throws up. Hassle a transfer. Wait till you make your first big save. Yeah, then they'll really give it to you. Can't wait. I can fight my own battles. Listen up. We got a scrimmage against Aurora this Saturday. Okay. The bus leaves 3 p.m. sharp. You miss the bus. You don't play any game. A mustache. Yeah, it is. Shave it. <laughs> Check out that smell. Woo! <laughs> her name's Lucy Wilson. She turned down the last 13 guys who asked her out. She likes to maximize rejection. Matthews, what are some of the physiological effects of inebriation? Uh, drunkenness? <laughs> Your judgment's impaired. Your reflexes slow. Look at the proof. The government estimates that 27,000 people will die this year in alcohol-related accidents. 27,000. So if you make it home driving drunk, the good news is you're alive. The bad news is your liver's working overtime. It'll take hours for your body to oxidize all that alcohol. 
and you're going to have a terrific hangover. Peterson, what's the physiological definition of a hangover? All I know is you get a dry throat and a whopping headache. <laughs> J.D. Next time, boil the carrots, huh? You're making too much noise. <laughs> Good practice. Good job. Not you, Shaw. Get the pucks. We're gonna work on your angles. Thanks for the ride, Rick. I think. It's pretty hot, isn't she? Well, if your scholarship doesn't come through, there's always a future in drag racing. Hey, David. Scholarship's in the bag. See you at 6 a.m., buddy. Sharp! before we eat. Mom, I'm hungry. I need bulk. Who was that who drove you home? A uh, guy from the team. Does this guy have a name? Yeah, Rick Peterson. He's the captain. The captain drives fast. David. Mom, I've got some stuff I've got to do before dinner. Just give a holler when it's ready. Did you pass? I aced it. Hey, <laughs> all right. How's practice? Great. Hi, old man. <laughs> mm, hungry. <laughs> Willie, Jeff, come back here. Help set the table. Busted. Uh, How was practice? Oh, well, Great. Yeah. I got a nice feeling. I feel really good about my ace. Hello? No, he's busy. Call back at 8.15. Was it Nora? Who's a 12-year-old girl with a husky voice? That's Nora. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, just a minute. She hung up. Nora, what a pest. <laughs> Come on, let's get the show on the road. I got a couple of calls to make. Coming through. What do you think? I'm going to have it finished in time for Jeff's birthday. Nice. I love it. Look, I think I'll call Jack Harris at Wisconsin about a scholarship for Jimmy Matthew. How's that sound? Sounds okay, but... But what? But I think Jimmy might be lost there. It's so big. Yeah, he's not the most aggressive guy around, but... You're right. Wisconsin's better for Rick. Jack, it's Bob Anastas. How are you? I want to get a leg up on peddling my aces. <laughs> the game's Saturday. Can you hold a sec? Carol. That's a nice sweater. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Rick. Are you sure that you saw Matthews this morning? Yeah, he said he was coming. 
Coach, it's three o'clock. It's ten minutes to three. We're up a creek without Jimmy. I can play wing. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Do you understand the four checking patterns? Hey, look. Two men on the puck. First man takes out the body. Second man follows up. Got it? We got a wing. Okay, let's go. Well, Matthews? Well, uh, well, my brother-in-law sent me this hat from Texas. Texas? Armarillo. What's that got to do with being late? Uh, well, I wanted to wear it for good luck. Uh, the mailman was late. I'm sorry, Mr. A. Jimmy, you demonstrated a lot of initiative by taking that cap. That's the kind of stuff that makes a winner. Of course, the rule still stands firm. You miss the bus, you don't play in the game. Unless, of course, there's an extraordinary circumstance. Like waiting for a hat from a brother-in-law in Amarillo, Texas. Something of that nature. That'll get you off the hook. Once. OK, Jesus, come on! Hey, hey David! Here you go. Good luck. Yeah, but your brother-in-law. I don't have a brother-in-law. What's the matter? Your dog died? We beat him. Have a brewski, dog. Ah, thanks. Well, go on. Drink up, eh? Go for it. Beat him. Rick's old squeeze. Well, aren't you gonna congratulate me? Score two goals. Slap shots. 20 feet out. Way to go, Rick. Nah, it was nothing. Matthew scored a couple. Shaw stopped four breakaways. Hmm. What time is it? 11. Hey, be cool. Team's curfew's another half hour. It's my father's curfew. I blew it last week. Oh, man.
Joy's 33, Thanks right? Your number? Joy, go. Very nice. Okay, come on. Hello. Okay, come on. Blue's a nice car. Bob. Rick Peterson's dead. He was killed in a car accident. Did you know Rick a long time? We were in confirmation class together. He was the first boy I ever had a crush on. He was the first guy I ever known that's died. Good boy. You just made a mistake. I would have understood if he was going to be late. Why didn't he phone? Why didn't he call? Why? Do you need something, Bob? I could come with you, Dad. I missed the coach after practice, Mrs. A. I needed to talk with him. Bob's not here. He'll be here later this evening. I'm going out tonight. I thought maybe I could catch him. 
It's nothing that important. Thanks, Mrs. A. Jimmy, I'm so sorry about Rick. Mom, I'm done. Can I be excused? Me too. All right. Rinse your plates, please. Dad's probably talking to some college coach. Family car, we think he was coming from a party. He was heading through town on Church Lane. Had the second boy in four days. How did it happen? Ah, uh, we don't know. The car swerved and went off an embankment over a creek. He was thrown out. Doctors want to ambulance him over to City generally if he improves. They don't think he will. I gotta call Carol before we go in. for Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, man, squeeze my hand. Come on, show me you're in there. Come on. You have to leave the room. The doctor needs to run some tests now. Inhalation therapist to ICU. Inhalation therapist to ICU. The nurse said she's never seen anything like it. All these kids visiting my Jimmy. They say that there's no uh, firm proof that drinking was involved. Jimmy's not a drinker. But I worry they found beer in the car. All these kids, they love him so much. Yes. Your sister's calling. You can take it at the nurse's station. Thank you.
instead. He was a great athlete. He was a great guy. You ever play soccer with him? Uh-uh. He was great. Well, life sure dealt him a lousy shot. Hey, guys, remember this? Jimmy used to listen to this all the time. Almost caught up with him in the dance. Kept missing him. He's already gone. It's weird how things work out. Just fishtailed out. I said shut up. This is Jimmy's song. I know, man. It seems like it just like. I said shut hey, up! Hey, 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 J.D. <laughs> We're my best friends. We've got to make sure we don't forget about them. They've got to matter. Yeah, they did matter. We'll find a way, J.D. Where have you been? I was out with the guys. It's late. Don't you think you I know! Me? I'm sorry. Good night, David. Coach, me and the others have discussed wearing black armbands for the rest of the season. Like in memory of Jimmy and Rick. Forget the armbands. Sir? They're a little late, don't you think? Each one of you buried Rick and Jimmy. Own it! You buried your own. Because you didn't care enough about them. You knew they were drinking, and you still... You still let them get into their cars and drive. Coach, it's a guy's own problem if he wants to drive. It's his business. It's his choice. Bull. If one of your teammates gets roughed up on the boards, it's his business? Do you ignore it? Or you try and protect them? You defend your goalie, don't you? You protect each other on the ice! You can't find enough caring in yourself to walk over to a friend at a party and say, hey, don't drink and drive! I know what it is. You think it's effeminate 
to care for your friend off the ice. I think it's unmanly. Being a man means holding your liquor, right? Wrong. People, I care for you. And I'm as tough as they come. I played in the semi-pros for a bus fare and pizzas. I used to look for my teeth at the end of the game. It is not manly. Caring is what makes you a man. Without it. The armbands are pointless. This isn't working. It's finished, people. No more grabs. No more statistics. I lecture. You sit there, and we miss each other completely. I used to say, so be it, but not anymore. Last week, I went to two funerals with you people. I watched you girls in your white dresses dropping flowers into the ground. I love those guys, just like you did. And it's unbelievable. They belong here with us, not out there. I must be doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong. And I don't know what it is. I don't have the answer. Help me. Nothing. You know, I got the feeling that we've never discussed the things that are really important to you. I know you have taboo subjects like sex and what goes on at parties. What other things can't you talk about? Hmm? Drinking. All right. So there's drinking and parties. Parties. That's where it all starts, isn't it? How many of you people drink at parties? Oh, come on, people. All right. That's a democracy for you. It's a great country. Your party. Some of you drink at these parties, right? OK. Who likes? to drive home drunk from these parties. <laughs> then why do you do it? Drink and drive. Why? Because you had to be cool? Because nobody likes to step out of the crowd? Ah, sure. What do you call that? Peer pressure. Peer pressure. Sometimes peer pressure makes you drink, even if you don't want to. I don't drink, but my old boyfriend did. He was on the football team. Every game, I was scared stiff, because afterwards, we'd get into the car with him behind the wheel after he'd been drinking. So why didn't you get out of the car? <laughs> He's my boyfriend. Peer pressure. Boyfriend pressure. It's powerful. It'll kill you. What are we supposed to do? I mean, we got to get home. I have a simple question. Do you ever think of calling your parents? <laughs> oh. I'll tell you what he's thinking. Look at him. He's a gas. Mr. A, you want me to tell my parents what I'm doing? Hey, you got to be kidding. Oh, people, how times do change. No communication with parents. Common sense tells us that these two things had a lot to do with those boys dying. What kind of positive action can we take? The simplest solution is just stop drinking, period. That's your best bet. 
Maybe we can do something to stop kids from drinking and driving. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Tie everyone down? Lock up the car keys? Form a group. What kind of group, though? For, for parents or teachers? How about us? For students? Wait a minute. You say you're against drinking and parties? Well, I'm for both of them. And I know I'm not the only one. Maybe not. But none of us want anybody else to drive drunk and die. Come on, guys. The bell's already rung. Let's get out of here. That'll work. Here, picture it. Waiter and tails, eager to please. Mouth-watering fresh lobster and crepe Suzette. Sounds interesting. Actually, it's more like pepperoni pizza at Jack's. And I'll bring the quarters for the video games. I promise we'll have a good time. I'm sure we will. Really? Really. All right. Okay, we've got our name. SAD, Students Against Driving Drunk. Now, people, what can we do to penetrate this Berlin Wall separating you and your parents? Leave home? <laughs> You're gonna get your pink slip in a couple of years, Reynolds. Don't worry. It just so happens I have an idea. Get out some paper. Contract for life? Read it aloud, David. <clears throat> it's a teenager. I agree to call you for advice and or transportation at any hour from any place if I am ever in a situation where I've been drinking or a friend or a date who has been driving me has been drinking. Parent, I agree to come and get you at any hour, any place, no questions asked and no argument at that time, or I will pay for a taxi to bring you home safely. I expect we would discuss this issue at a later time. I agree to seek safe, sober transportation home if I am ever in a situation where I have had too much to drink or a friend who is driving me has had too much to drink. Pretty cool, huh? David. You drink? Mom, I don't drink. You don't? Well, if I go to a party, I might have a couple beers. How often is that? David, you're only 16. Drinking's illegal. I know that, it's but... It's suicidal after those two boys died. I... Uh, forget I brought the whole thing up. You just don't understand. Uh, David, uh, let me read. Maybe we're missing the point. Doesn't this give you permission to drink? Now, this doesn't condone drinking, does it, David? No, Mom, it doesn't. Like, the coach is against drinking, too. But he says it's like a safety valve. It's like if we get into trouble. So we can feel OK to call you up to, you know, help out. If your word isn't good enough, I don't see the point in signing a contract. This is to show our good faith. Now, you have our phone number? <laughs> <laughs> I walked 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 I walked
really going to freak out when it's all this How many brought in signed contracts for life? Can you believe this? You know, my, my parents shocked me. They, they really got behind it. Great. I slipped it under my old man's nose. He'll sign anything. He didn't even look. <laughs> Good point, J.D. All this is is a piece of paper with some words and a bunch of names. The proof will be out there when it's tested for real. But it's a beginning. And if we dream it, it can be done. We finished the season four and seven. That's not so bad. Are you kidding? We got our butts kicked. You can say that again. True. Come on, I want to dance. Hey, I got my dad's new car. You guys want to go for a midnight ride? Later on, we're going home JD tonight. <laughs> hey, nine more. Hey, we'll get him next year, right? You betcha. See you, Beth. Night. What is the matter? Nothing's the matter. Hey, the lovebird. Ready to hit the road? You are crazy, J.D. Are you sure you're all right to drive? Hey, I'm all right. I just had a little beer. Right? David, will you? J.D., maybe this isn't such a good idea. David, could you drive? I can't. I don't have my license yet. Come on, let's go. JD, give me the keys. Hey, we're friends, right? I'll be right back. In 1982, Bob Anastas began traveling across the United States and Canada, talking to students about SAD. Since then, students have established SAD chapters in thousands of high schools across the country, and millions of teenagers and parents have signed the contract for life. Today, the number of deaths to teenagers in alcohol-related accidents has decreased by 23%.